Welcome back, Seth Fling here. I've got an update on a really old piece of Minecraft technology that I showed way back, about a year ago actually, and it's this map thingy. Okay, so we've got this contraption in front of me, and clear desert beyond that, but on the map it shows a picture of Notch. This is, a, this is the picture that Notch uses on his Twitter, and the idea behind this is that I can press a button right here, and there will be a lot of lag. A lot of lag. <laughs> the game gets quite laggy. So there's going to be tons of piston lag because there's like thousands of pistons being pushed right now. But after a few seconds, we will get a new picture on the map. And almost there, almost there, almost there. It's a fish. It's a tropical fish. So yeah this contraption is able to switch between images and the update is that the resolution of this contraption is about four times as high in each dimension as it was last time I showed it. Last time I had a 12 pixel by 10 pixel screen this one has a 40 pixel by 60 pixel screen uh, 40 high 60 wide and that's pretty cool it's due to the new mechanics on maps where here's a dragon, a little, little dragon guy that I found on Google. Uh, it's due to, due to mechanics on maps where you can now have more zoomed in versions of maps. So each pixel on this map corresponds to a two block by two block column of space. So let me just get to the last image in the in the uh, cycle. There's only four images just because that's how many I decided to put in here. And it's a kitty. Aww. So cute. All right, so yeah, basically it's just an improvement on the old technology. Now the way I've done this is actually a little bit more, it's a little bit more complicated uh, of a contraption. Just, I had to offset some things. Okay, so let me, let me come at it from above. Now, okay, so I, like I said, every two by two column corresponds to one pixel. So the way the game does it, it looks at it from above, and it, and it looks at what what block is on the top of each uh, each column in the game. So there's a wood block on top of this column. There's a stone block down here, and if we if we drop way down here, it sees another wood block and another wood block. And so those are the that's the two by two square that it's looking at for this one pixel on the map, and wood is the most common block type there and so on the map it shows the wood color and if we go if we go to the next two by two chunk that's uh this one this one and then these two down here so if we look down here it's dirt dirt and then there was wood and stone so yeah wood and stone so this one the most common block type is actually dirt so that's going to show dirt for this pixel and so all the pixels in the map do that and then if you if we take a look down here we can see I have a little piston tape set up so pistons can push blocks you know this way and then down and then up over and then up and uh, and so I can I can cycle through this piston tape twice in order to get to the next image and that's and that's what this little contraption here does and and so when, um, so that's what allows me to switch between the images now I had to do a lot of trickiness to get the pixels to fit in the right space. So I have, this belongs to one pixel, this, this row here belongs to one pixel, this row here belongs to another pixel, and then all of the redstone that controls those piston tapes needs to be beneath those two blocks so that it's not showing. And so that's why I had to, had to do it this way. Of course you can download this, this whole machine if you want to check it out for yourself, but um, yeah, so then the other thing, you might be wondering why I didn't have this row of blocks down lower. Why I didn't put it down here so it would be even with this one. It would look a little bit nicer. It looks kind of weird to have it floating here. Uh, the reason for that is uh, is beveling. And if you've seen a map before, actually, if you look off to the top right part of the map, there's a bunch of lighter and darker gray. And that's those are all stone blocks, but sometimes you get light or dark gray uh, showing up because of height differences. And it's more apparent when you look at like a real map, but or like you look at the water 
say, on real map, because it'll show you what the height differences are by using that sort of shading. So the way that Minecraft determines the, the, the shading is it'll look at a pixel, look at the 2x2 two two region here, and it'll determine, it'll calculate the average height of those blocks. So the average height for these is somewhere, you know, somewhere around where I am right now for this pixel. But then if you look over by one, so then this is another 2x2 two two pixel. It's this, one, this wood one, this stone one, and then these two wood ones down here. Um, the average for these also happens to be right here. I, I, I made it so that they were, the average was exactly the same. And what that does is it makes sure that there's no, there's no height difference between the pixels. And so if the game doesn't see any height difference, it's not going to add any of that shading. That's the, that's the only circumstance in which it will add uh, any sort of height difference. So this is, like I said, it's an update on old technology. Uh, I think it's really cool. The, this is a little bit trickier, though, uh, if you want to do something with it other than cycling between images. Now, what I've done here is I, I have the piston tapes, but if you want to control each pixel individually and have redstone that does that, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because you need to actually get the redstone in to control those pixels. And if you want to have be able to switch pixels between different colors, uh, at will by using some sort of redstone controlling computer uh, it's gonna be a little bit harder to hide all the redstone and have the the right stuff on top of the uh, on top of the the pixel so that it'll be seen by the game and calculated when the pixel colors are calculated but I, I know that it is possible it just it will probably take a lot more vertical space because you'll be hiding pixels underneath other pixels etc so That'd be an interesting challenge to take on if you want a, uh, a difficult redstone challenge. Feel free to download this for yourself and, and really dig into how it works. Uh, the redstone itself is really simple. It's just uh, basically there's a monostable circuit here that goes out and causes a pulse, which causes the pistons to cycle. And there's another delayed pulse from that monostable circuit, which causes the pistons to cycle again. But if, if you look at it for a while, you'll, you'll get it. Uh, I put this image here. You'll notice if I press the button, um, well, all the pistons are going to fire and my game is going to get really laggy again. But the the map here isn't updating at all. And when the lag stops in a few seconds, this map will still be showing a picture of a kitten. And, okay, the lag has stopped, so we're on to the next image. I think it's... Yeah, we should be about on to the next image. Uh, when I pull out my map, it's just going to update it at the same time. So basically that map data gets updated only if somebody is actually holding the map in the region. And if I went, if I was too far away, it wouldn't update it because it would be too far away. So that's just another thing to look out for. The, the frames on the walls don't just update uh, on their own. You have to actually update them by holding the map. But this is a really cool technology. I, it's, it's, this has always been my favorite invention because I, I was the first person to create a map-based display way back way back about a year ago and uh, Notch tweeted it out he liked it and and this is this is kind of my proudest invention and so I, I'm happy that it, that we're able to get a higher resolution displays using the technology that's yeah, pretty cool so I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching